Hello again, this is Doug the Two Minute Gardener and today we're going to talk about how to plant a slope. I live here in San Diego and there are just slopes everywhere so I get asked this question a lot. And so I'm going to walk you through the steps on really how to plant a slope so it can really thrive. Whether you're doing succulents or natives or ground covers, these steps apply to all three kinds of slopes. So let's get going. First up, of course, you have to clear the slope. And so basically scrape it all down. If the slope has a lot of weeds and stuff, like you see in this, they're going to have to probably do some spraying, otherwise those weeds are just going to pop up later in the process. But if you have a nasty slope like this, you got to just muscle it up and clear the slope of all that nasty vegetation before you can do anything with it. Once the slope is cleared, you want to adjust the irrigation. So what that means is now is your time that you can add some new irrigation heads, update the valves, run some lateral lines but you're not going to run the final spaghetti tubing until you actually do the planting once you've finished adjusting irrigation you really got to amend the soil now amending the soil can be a bunch of different things it depends on the kind of slope you have and the quality of the soil this soil building conditioner is a really good general use product for those kinds of slopes that just have you know not a lot of good soil to plant in that's good stuff to mix in uh, if I'm doing a native garden and I have hard clay, I definitely want to add some garden gypsum and grow power to help break up the soil, start adding some really important microbial life. And then lastly, I want to top it off with some grow mulch, which serves as both a mulch and a mix uh, on there. And I don't have to rototill it in a whole lot, just kind of get it in there in place for the next step, which is adding the jute netting. Of all the steps, this is the most important because jute netting holds all those amendments you just put on there in place and then it will hold the bark mulch once the slope is mulched. It also helps to slow down the water from running down the slope. Um, so the jute netting is really important. And by the way, make sure to hit the like button if you're really enjoying this video and if it's proving helpful. All right, so we have put the jute netting on the slope and now it's time to start laying out the plants, plant the plants. So. For planting the plants in jute netting, it's really easy. You just kind of reach over where the plants are and pull the netting apart. It pulls open really easily. And then you can dig the hole and just plant those plants. Now, if you're planting tree shrubs, you want to use that dirt and kind of make a little reservoir on the side of the hill so the water has something to hold it in place while the plants are really young. Next, you want to add some best packs or some kind of slow release fertilizer. This is important for a slope because the nutrients, when the plants are young, are going to just roll down the slope. And you want to have something that's going to really slowly release those nutrients uh, over the course of several months. And so, best packs or other kind of slow release um, fertilizers are great for that. All right, once you laid your best packs, then you want to get the mulch. And mulch is very important, especially out of these hot Southern California slopes. You want to use a shredded mulch because shredded mulch will grip the jute netting and not just roll down the hill. Do not use bark nougat mulch on slopes. It will just roll down the hill with the first winter storm you have. After you've mulched everything, you want to add a pre-emergent herbicide like this Preen. Amaze is another good product. Um, and this basically stops weeds from germinating on the slope. And that's important because you've now added all these soil amendments, you've added this water, um, and you're going to have the weeds come roaring back unless you do the mulching and the pre-emergent herbicide. Now, as I've talked in previous videos with pre-emergent herbicide, you do not want to be using that around dogs, small kids, so just really kind of be cautious with it. It is an herbicide. Um, don't let it, don't use it where it might run into a water feature or other kinds of runoff issues. But it's really good for holding, you know, keeping the weeds in, under control on these really giant slopes. All right, once you've done the mulch and the pre-emergent herbicide, now it's time to go back and adjust that irrigation, fine tune where the emitters are, if it's a drip irrigation on the slope, and tweak the irrigation. And lastly, you wanna just hose it all down. Just get the old hose out and wash the preen and wash the mulch off the little baby plants. Give everything a good soaking. If you're planting this during the hot time of the year here in Southern California, then you're probably gonna to need to run that irrigation 
irrigation every day to help those plants get adjusted. But there's lots of different charts available online to tell you how much to water the plants once you get them established. A, on a slope, better to water a little bit more than a little bit less in those first six months just to help them out. Well, again, that's kind of those steps work for all different kinds of slopes for it's succulents, natives, or just a general ground cover kind of slope. There are other videos, as you can see in the links right there, that go over my favorite plants for the slopes. So definitely check those out to see which video, uh, which plants will work for putting on your kind of slope, whether they're a succulent or ground cover or a California native plant. Well, we are out of time. Thank you so much. Make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe if you got value out of this video. This is Doug, the two-minute gardener, saying thank you so much for watching.